Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I'm looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. St. Petersburg, Russia. This Western European-style city served as Russia's capital for two centuries before the Communist Revolution. Now, what does one do in Russia? Why am I in Russia, anyway? Let me explain something. The, the first good cook I knew Alexei Getmanov, his name was. Very proud of the fact that he was Russian. And he was the first guy I knew who was really into food. And he really inspired me to actually get serious about food. So now that the Soviet Union is gone and Russia's opened up, I feel I owe it to old Alexei to undergo a personal quest. I want to find out what inspired him. I want to steep myself deep in the Russian psyche. I want to find out what makes these Russian people tick. And the best way to do that anywhere is to start with the food. What am I doing? Why am I here? Am I insane? Of all of the insane things I've done in this world, standing in the Neva River in St. Petersburg, in Russia, in the middle of winter, has got to be up there in the top 10. This hardly seems the place to begin a quest for culinary inspiration. But I'm far from the craziest man out on the ice today. For this frozen wasteland is the domain of that hardiest of sportsmen, the ice fisherman. Even the bleakest parts of Russia are filled with slow-flowing, fish-filled waterways. So there's a long tradition of pulling dinner right out of the backyard. Ice fishing explained. Some build plastic tents to stay warm. Others just drink lots of vodka, but they all do one thing the same, sit and fish out of tiny holes in the ice. This is not exactly the most firm footing in the world, I should point out, by the way. Oh, yeah, here, look. If you look through there close enough, you can see the frozen corpse of the last TV Food Network guy to come here, kind of clawing at the underside. I meet up with my Russian translator and guide, Zamir, who's arranged a rendezvous with two old salts, Vladimir and his pal Igor. How does he get through the ice? I'd like that ice to be a lot thicker. With little time to waste before his worms freeze to death, Vladimir baits his hook. Supposedly, anything from perch to pike can be caught here, if you're lucky. There's a 30-pound sturgeon with my name on it, swimming around under there, just bursting with roe. This is interesting. This is a mark of how cold it is here, okay? He has to keep skimming the water because it crystallizes and fills up with ice. You can actually see it freezing right in front of your eyes. Oh, we got something. He's got something. Very clever fish. We go. It's gonna be like this. <laughs> Before I even realize it, Vladimir pulls up his catch. Not what I expected. As in all real situations that try men's endurance, physical and mental toughness, alcohol is involved. I think that's really kind of the point, actually. I don't know whether it's actually the fish. I think it's to get away from your family, sit out where nobody's going to bother you, and drink vodka at 11 o'clock in the morning. Cheers. Do your health. I swear you. I want to thank these gentlemen. Thank you. Since the fish didn't seem to be biting today, Zamir and I decided it was time to move on. Not all Russians fish for an economical breakfast, and Zamir thinks he knows just the place for us. 
Nice. So, where are we going? Uh, so the next thing on our plan is Kolobok, uh, which is a pretty fast food uh, Viroshki place. Viroshki. Okay, so that's what we're about to have. That's what we're going to have. And now, who's going to this place? This is not a tourist Well, normally hangout. it's the working class. So this is a, a place reasonable. of your ordinary uh, yeah, ordinary people will go on the way to work. During the lunch break or early morning if they miss their breakfast at home for any reason or even late after work. Let's eat. Poroshki are small Russian turnovers made with a thick pastry dough. First, the dough is prepared from scratch. Then it's filled with any number of savory fillings from meat to vegetables and cheese to sweet fruits. Then they're either fried or baked, depending on their ingredients. In the blink of an eye, they come out hot and ready to eat. So, one of each? One of each. Meat, fish, cabbage, and maybe you've seen one of these before. I, I, I couldn't resist, you know, giant bigot blanket. Okay, let's go we'll try the cabbage okay, first. Okay, so let's try that. This is really good. I could bring this to a ball game, or <laughs> why not? Yeah. Hold up in front of the TV set with a big stack of these things. Right. I mean, no, very reasonable for anyone can afford it. It's not like a real expensive something. Which is now. Let's see. This is an entirely unfamiliar object to me. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. Okay, they don't have baseball here yet, but the hot dog is here. Baseball to follow. Okay. You have all the necessary ingredients. I mean, you've got good beer, you've got hot dogs. What else do you need? Okay, that's my calling in life. After they kick me out of the kitchen and I'm blacklisted from television forever, I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna start a little league team. I'll start coaching the next generation of Russian baseball players. So after a full day in Russia, I found my footing. It's time to get back to the root of my mission and pay some respects. Well, my first exposure to Russian food in my young life was uh, in Provincetown. I was working with my good friend and mentor, Alexei Getmanov, a, uh, a cook of Russian origin, who introduced me to a dish called kulabyak. So I asked Amir to hook me up uh, with, uh, with some kulabyak, which he did but uh, he will not be able to attend. So I'm going someplace I really don't know, I'm meeting someone I also don't know, and uh, she's gonna cook me some kolobyak, I hear. Now, my directions were down Nevsky Prospect, take the turn, first door on the right of a very recognizable landmark, and there it is. This looks like it, the doorway under the golden arches. Right off the bat, I have an uneasy feeling. Kulabyak. It's an extremely elaborate fish pie, which was made for the czars. It requires hours and hours of work to prepare. It's the Frankenstein's monster of food. Samir's friend. <laughs> Lubia is a friend of a friend of a friend of Zamir's. Because Kulabyak is so elaborate, she's the only person Zamir could find in all of St. Petersburg who's available to make it for me. And she volunteered to do it simply for the joy of its creation. First, she spends at least an hour making the pastry dough from scratch. Then she spends a couple more hours assembling an exhaustive list of ingredients for the filling, each of which requires its own initial preparation. Most important of these being the fish, which is the main ingredient. Finally, in another hour, she lays out the dough and layers all the ingredients. Fish, roe, eggs, rice and onions, chopped potatoes, scallions and spices, roe, crepes, eggs, fish, rice and onions, fish, chopped eggs, potatoes, chopped rice and onions, scallions and spices, rice and onions, chopped potatoes, rice and onions, scallions and spices, rice and onions, chopped potatoes, rice and onions, scallions and spices, rice and onions, chopped potatoes, rice and onions, scallions Finally, she seals it and puts it in the oven for another couple of hours. This took a little longer than I anticipated. Uh, and it's a little big. Uh, 
I don't think I can finish that. And I see for beverage, oh yeah, big surprise here. After five hours, I'm finally served the Kulabiak. Has anyone ever heard of water in this country? Unfortunately, I no longer have an appetite. Not only am I without an appetite, I'm without company. Well, I'm alone. I don't have to watch my table manners. Lubia has gone out, but when she returns to see me off, she's going to expect a large dent in the Kulabiak after all her work. And I don't want to disappoint her. But something's wrong. This is not as flaky and delicate as I seem to recall. This is going to be a long night. Maybe a little vodka to wash it down. I'm beginning to get the idea why Zamir couldn't make it. I wonder if the czars were this lonely. After a rough night alone, battling jet lag and Kulabiak, a dish the Russians could keep, frankly, I'm feeling a little under the weather. And in Russia, that's saying something. Zamir has promised me a special day that he claims will recoup my body and my palate. It begins with a trip to the banya, a traditional Russian bathhouse. There's a little more to a banya than sweating in a towel. Okay, so it's about, about close to zero degrees. It's real cold. We're on a frozen lake, and, and we're about to get healthy Russian style. Now, as I understand it, I'm going to uh, sit in a sauna and get nice and hot. Then I'm going to have uh, some nice uh, Russian appetizers, a little vodka. And beer. Maybe beer. A little more, so a little more heat. And then, if I get this straight, I'm going to run out on this railing here, and I'm going to jump into that. Yeah, definitely. It's going to like it. OK, and I'm going to, that's going to make me really healthy. Yeah, you'll be the, the healthiest man I ever met. OK. Mm -hmm. I think this could be a television first. It's the real thing. OK. Make sure I write a last will and testament before this. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing significant shrinkage here. All right, I can do that. No problem. A Russian banya is not your local YMCA. It's something more akin to a spa experience that's come to embody a very specific set of bathing rituals. Banyas have been around for centuries and are as much a part of weekly life for Russians as going to the gym is for an American. They say there's a level of cleanliness and health that can only be achieved by visiting a banya. The first part of the banya ritual is to warm up in the sauna, then hit the steam room. Heat. Snacks will be here. Essential ingredient over here. It's going to take a hell of a lot of this to get me in the uh, into the pool. All right, I'm ready. OK, good luck to us. Ah. Woo. After about 30 minutes roasting at 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the Banya steam room, Samir and I are getting a little hungry. Ah. Oof, kind of hot. Oh, that looks good. That's Zdorovia. That's Zdorovia. William Zdorovia. Turns out that in Russia, drinks and food can be part of the sauna experience. Just smell it, you know, it really gives you some kind of understanding. Oh, that's good. Some smoked meat. Country bread, some smoked. What kind of fish is that? Lish. That's the Russian one. I'm not sure whether you have any analog of that. Take all the insides out, and it's ready to go. Oh, that is good. Just you have to really enjoy it, you know. Take this tiny bit, do it like this, you know. Probably, you know, when your salt gets out in the steam, right? kind of compensate the shortage of it with the fish right. product. The banya keeps getting better and better. Olga arrives for what I'm told is a relaxing and purifying massage. I'd like to use uh, the branches of birch <laughs> of a special message, a special Russian message. Yeah, special message, all right. Something like, we have ways of making you talk. Some massage. They dip tree branches in water and beat the crap out of you with them. It actually wasn't so bad at first. Then it may be more strong if you want. No, a little more strong is fine. Okay. 
for gentlemen. Now resting. Okay. Thank you. I know women who get paid like $700 an hour to do that to which rich guys in New York. No problem. So far, so good. All right, I can do this. Let's go. Uh, it's time for the moment of truth. No trip to this barn is complete without a dip in the lake. So far, so good. Oh. All right. Okay. Not so far, so good. Oh. Oh. Ah, my jaw's frozen. All your pores shrink up real tight. I think I have about 30 seconds. Oh. Okay, my feet are sticking to the pavement. Just starting to feel it on my feet. Oh, I'll let you know when I feel it. I like this lifestyle, I'm telling you. I could do this. I could have one of these in my backyard if I lived up here. Do this, you know, a few times a week. Yeah. How long have people been doing this, jumping into ice water for uh, hundreds of years? <laughs> Zamir and I end up hanging around for a few hours, just chilling out. But when the smoke fish runs out and the sun hits the horizon, Zamir reminds me that we have reservations to keep. Zamir, you know, you've been dunking me in ice water here. You've been whacking <laughs> me with sticks. You've been feeding me working class food. You know what? I want a really fancy high-end meal. I want to eat like the czar's ate. The caviar, right? I want caviar. Good! Let's go. Ruski restaurant. Oh. Ruski restaurant is haute cuisine, top of the line specialty dining that unfortunately most Russians would not be able to afford. But I want to experience the full range of what St. Petersburg has to offer. And what better way to kick things off than with a few glasses of the good stuff? Homemade vodka with horseradish, oh. which is to be followed by Cucumber juice. Okay. This vodka and horseradish packs quite a punch. So I'm hoping the cucumber juice will put out the fire. Really interesting. It's like um, pickling brine mm -hmm. for right. not from a dill pickle, but from you know those green fresher pickles that you've probably seen in the deli. Also, you, you drink this straight without the vodka beforehand, you're thinking, not a good thing. Together, they're spectacular. It's kind of like sweating it out in a sauna and then jumping into a nice cold lake. Either one of them by themselves is probably not a great idea, but together, they feel really good. <laughs> now I know why they drink so much vodka in Russia. It's something to do while you wait, which seems to be all the time. Something tells me this time it'll be worth it. After a couple of shots of Ruski Restaurant's homemade vodka, Samir and I are ready for some roughage. Okay, we're hitting the salad bar. I'm, I have to tell you, I'm deeply suspicious of salad bars. I hate the whole concept. All right, no iceberg lettuce and synthetic bacon bits here. Just cabbage and mint, turnips and olive oil, marinated beans and parsley, wild mushrooms and potatoes, pickled beets and herring salad. My mother will be very proud of me <laughs> when she sees this. She still calls me and says, you know, are you eating any vegetables? Do you ever <laughs> eat a salad? And now, mostly meat, cheese, and liquor. Mom. Not to mention pure pork fat, which Russians call sala. I can't believe I'm eating straight fat. <laughs> it's good. Glad we, we shot the sauna scene already. Let's put it that way. After this meal, I'm going to look like Paul Prudhomme. I'm going to be zipping around my kitchen on a little scooter. Back in the kitchen, the chef is fixing me up a sterlet, a relative of the sturgeon. This is what I was hoping to catch out on the ice yesterday morning. After a dousing with lemon juice and his special spices, he broils it, gives it a liberal basting, and turns it into a work of art. It's spectacular. It looks kind of bad. Stir it with what looks like pickled plums, maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's completely boned out. That's really good. As wonderful as this meal has been, I'm really only after one thing, caviar, and lots of it. You know, I think the caviar is one of those things, you best gorge on it. You know, you should eat it with your hands. You should eat too much of it. You should be fully aware of the fact that, that this is not something you do every day. Caviar, or fish eggs, are usually served with a variety of garnishes, like blini, small yeast-raised pancakes. No. Okay, first of all, this, this has got to be the sexiest looking thing ever. Big, fluffy blini. Onion. Onion. Egg white. Yep. Egg yolk. I or, think so. I'm a purist, meaning 
really, what do I like? I like the caviar, I like the blini. All of this other uh, chotkas I can do without. <laughs> so as I'm shoveling down the caviar, the waitress informs Amir that there's a little problem, a slight oversight on our part. Try to picture this happening in New York. Your waitress coming over to you and saying, you know, we don't think you've had enough to drink. That's the wrong. That's the wrong. I love this country. Zamir, you rock. From frozen lakes to fast food to the finest restaurants around, I'm starting to understand where Alexei's passion for food came from. Simple foods, always prepared in interesting ways, prepared with care that taste delicious. And that's enough for me to make a return trip.